And turning now to a stunning development in the case of an archbishop who was convicted of covering up sexual abuse in Australia that occurred in the 1970s. Archbishop Philip Wilson conviction has now been overturned. He was telling the truth when he denied knowing about anything about sexual abuse committed in the 1970s. That's the finding this morning by an appeals court that overturned his conviction in May. After that verdict, Archbishop Wilson resigned his post as the Archbishop of Adelaide. Today, the Archdiocese said it welcomed the new ruling where the appeals court determined there was reasonable doubt Wilson committed any crime. The Archbishop had already served four months of a year-long sentence. To talk about this development, we are joined by national correspondent for the tablet and crux, Christopher White. Christopher, thank you, as always, for being here with us. Is there any precedent at all or historical examples similar to today's news where a high profile prelate has had his conviction overturned? Well, Liz, not only is there little precedent for an overturning of a, a verdict like this, but there have only been a handful of prelates that have actually been charged. You know, in, in general, prosecutors are wary to charge a clergy uh, because oftentimes when these charges come up, you know, it's been so long and the statute of limitations mm -hmm. have passed. Uh, but besides Wilson, we have, uh, you know, uh, Bishop Robert Finn here in the U.S., two prelates in France, and that's really about all that come to mind that have ever even been brought to trial. Okay. Uh, so the fact that he was uh, not only brought to trial and then it goes to appeals court and his verdict is overturned is a very rare occasion. Well, now the big question is, do you think there was a rush to judgment surrounding Archbishop Wilson? Were there over-eager prosecutors who just wanted heads to roll? You know, I, I spoke with Archbishop Mark Coleridge, who was the head of the Australian Bishops Conference over the summer uh, when this uh, issue was sort of first bubbling up, if you will. Uh, and he said, you know, he wanted due process to be involved, for victims to be heard, but for also the Archbishop to have his rights defended. Uh, but he said he couldn't help but just sort of lament the fact that within Australia, there is a sort of anti-clerical sentiment. And because of the clergy abuse crisis has been so great within the country, that it really uh, is difficult for folks to get a fair trial. And that's certainly a factor that has to be weighed in this. Christopher, let's talk about what we have learned here in the United States. Since the Dallas Charter in 2002, U.S. bishops have sought to curb sexual abuse and punish offenders. So has there been any overreach or cases where due process has been denied? Yeah, Liz, in fact, within the Dallas Charter, part of the bishop's commitment that they make is that if there are priests that are brought forward for clerical sex abuse and found not guilty, that they will make every effort possible to restore this prelate's good name. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's really hard hard to do after the fact, uh, because once someone's name has been sort of surfaced out there, it's, it's a difficult thing. And, you know, there are stories out there, multiple stories of, of priests showing up in Rome saying, who do I have to talk to to have my case heard? I'm, you know, I'm innocent, I'm innocent, I'm innocent. So it's very difficult to navigate this fine line between justice uh, for, for all parties involved. And that being said, uh, what might the Wilson exoneration mean for the efforts of priests to, pub to publish the names of priests accused of sexual abuse. Yeah, one of the things that came out of the U.S. bishops meeting in Baltimore last month was this real sort of desire uh, for priests to publish the list of all clergy accused of abuse. But the question is the language involved, because so, so often the language that is used is that of credibly accused. What does it mean to be credibly accused? Most people, uh, you know, say we've got to have more evidence than that. It has to be substantiated evidence, not just credible claims. Mm -hmm. uh, and so one of the things the U.S. bishops are doing is looking to sort of unify all of their standards across the board. Mm -hmm. What are the long-lasting effects now of clearing the Archbishop's name? Well, I, I think, you know, uh, as you said, he's already resigned his post. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it will be simply the job of his brother bishops uh, and, and fellow priests to simply uh, tell the people, you know, the, the truth. Uh, and that's what, what we're all sort of relying on here. A question I always pose to you, Christopher, mm -hmm. what's next? Where do we go from here? Well, of course, in Australia, you know, the country's been roiled by sexual ab abuse. Mm -hmm. uh, here, obviously, we'll, we'll turn what we talked to yesterday, Liz. We'll turn to the Vatican, where Pope Francis has called a global summit in February to address this issue across the board. Uh, and we'll see if there's some sort of uh, universal solution mm -hmm. to move us all forward as one church. Thank you, Christopher, as always, for some very important insight on this story. Thank you.